Can you die of a broken heart? I would if something happened to you. Oh, thank you. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, the risk of a heart attack goes up 21 times within the first 24 hours if you've lost a loved one. Boy, that's hard to believe. I know. That's a huge factor. And eight times within the next week, and then it keeps increasing after that for not increasing more, but it, it continues lasts. to increase yeah, uh, for, for up to a month. It's a big deal when somebody that you really care about is gone. That's a shock uh, to the system, and the heart suffers from that. Uh, they did a Harvard study in a, in a journal called Circulation on 2,000 patients over five years, and what they found was is that there was a change in, in blood pressure that was higher uh, and heart rate which was higher, and blood became stickier, and all these factors tend to make the risk of a heart attack go up. So it's interesting how the psychological stress can can break your heart physically. You Absolutely. Know? Well, you know, I've always thought that what you think has a profound effect on your biochemistry and physiology, and that's indeed true. And it explains a lot of the diseases that we see. You know, people who are upset have headaches or ulcers or back pain or they don't get well from something or they get a lot of colds. What you think and, and your physiology are powerful, powerful things. So if you have someone in your family who's lost their spouse, I mean, you better check up on them. Really? You know? Or get them some psychotherapy because the grief causes a lot of depression and anxiety and anger. Think That's about, you know, people that this has happened to. I mean, I think we've all heard of stories like this where somebody dies and then shortly after the spouse exactly. dies. Exactly. And think about the movie The Notebook. Mm, beautiful story Boy, there, huh? Yeah, she was, they both died together in the bed. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it, if you can, <laughs> well, if you you can know, arrange it I've that heard, way. I've heard stories about um, my great-grandparents, and he was very sick, and my great-grandmother was taking care of him, and she fell down the stairs, when she was going downstairs to get something for him. She fell down the stairs, and she broke her neck, and mm. killed her. Oh, wow. And they had a lot of children, and the kids didn't know what to do, so they just picked her up and carried her upstairs and put her in bed next to him. Oh, and wow. In the morning, he was dead, too. Oh, my gosh, what a story. Yeah. You know, the shock causes, actually, a stress cardiomyopathy, which means that the heart goes into shock. There are high levels of cortisol that are produced by the adrenal glands, and there's adrenaline and noradrenaline that goes up high, and it causes a kind of shock. And if the heart doesn't have enough reserves to take care of itself, it basically goes into congestive heart failure. So you could see both heart attack and congestive heart failure as well as all the rhythm disturbances that are prone to that situation happening. So this is, this is a powerful kind of thing that happens and we should keep it in mind. So if you know somebody who's in a situation where that's likely to happen, it may be a good time to spend a little time with them or make sure that they're getting a little bit of support from somebody or a psychologist or uh, some kind of support group. Uh, I think hospice, when you can prepare for things like that, is really good at providing uh, support for the family, all at no cost, In fact, I think and support offer, groups. I think they offer a year of grief counseling to yeah. the family, to the, anybody in the family. Right. So can you die of a broken heart? You bet. It's a physiological thing that we know a lot about. And uh, I think that as long as we know that that's an issue, when we know people are in that situation or we're in it ourselves, it's time to take care of ourselves and get the support we need so we don't die of a broken heart too.